Okay, good morning, North Springs Church. Come on, talk back to me. Morning. Jerry and Darlene, you're in the wrong place. I mean, you're you're on this side, and today you're you're. Oh, okay, okay. They we have visitors here. We need okay. Welcome, Mike and Sandy. Ma, you had a lot to do with this church being here. And I think you had a lot even to do with our coming here, Lydia House, because we've been friends for many years, so it's wonderful to... Hey, stand up, folks. I want to ask you a question. Who is the light of the world? I knew you would say that. But in the bulletin, if you read this, it says at the open of the bulletin, it says, you are. You are the light of the world. We know he, you, you were right in what you said. I'm not going to correct you. But you are the light of the world. And so we come here to get strengthened, to get nourished, to get encouraged, because we will go from this place as lights in a dark place, right? Doesn't it seem like it's getting darker? There's a lot of struggle out there. Uh, the men were praying. I know the women were praying too. There's a lot of struggles. So, Father, we come together today with grateful hearts that we have a place, that we're your people, that we can come together and be encouraged. And then we can leave and be lights wherever you send us. We thank you. And we, we ask for the presence of your spirit among us as we gather in the name of your son, Jesus. Just reach out to one another. We've got friends here today uh, around. Bob and Rhea, welcome to North Springs Church. Akiko, yes, Akiko, a friend of, of us and a friend of John and Masumi. So uh, reach out and say hi to people around you, okay? Realize we're all. Yes. Kent is a Klansman. All Johnstone worship team. I like it. Paul loves it when he releases people and then he makes me gather them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, man. It's like, thanks. I, I gotta be the, the heavy. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's bring it back in. I I'm just still so thankful for last week's service. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's important that we acknowledge when God is awesome. Now God's always awesome, but sometimes he demonstrates that awesomeness, and last week was one of those things. He spoke to so many people, so many testimonies, and we had three, did you pick that up? We had three healings. Three people got supernaturally healed last week. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I've been praying for this, like, since I was a child, okay, to start seeing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit like we see it in the Bible, in the book of Acts. Five years ago or so, God told me, I want you to pray for healing every single service. Every single service, I want you to pray for healing. And in the last five years, I think we've had two. Two in five years. Praise God for those two, right? Um, multiple times I've been asked, why do you keep praying for healing when nobody's getting healed? And my response is always the same. I keep praying for healing because nobody's getting healed. If we reached a point where there was nobody in the house that needed healing, maybe we would stop praying for it. I don't know. But right now, that's not the case. Amen? So we're going to keep praying. So three people healed last week. That's revival as far as I'm concerned. I'm so thankful. So let's just raise up that gratitude to the Lord. And if you're one who still needs healing, you still need a touch from the Lord, raise up that gratitude even higher. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you. A couple other people, just shout out your gratitude to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you, God. Yes, we have mercy in your grace. 
Thank you, Jesus. Now let's all focus our minds in on worshiping this morning. We want to love you, Lord, with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. And we are easily distracted by so many things, good things, bad things, difficult things. And so, Lord, help us to set those things aside this morning and focus in on worshiping you, praising you, thanking you for who you are and everything that you've done. We thank you that we live because you live. Amen? So help us to set those things down this morning and focus on you. In Jesus' name. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join. was dead in the grave I was covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name and he rolled the stone away Amen Amen I'm alive I'm alive because he Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, every fear is gone. I know he holds my life, my future in his hands. Sing that again, because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, every fear is gone. I know he holds my life, my future in his hands. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that lives. Jesus, but because you live, we live. We live in you. We praise you, Lord, for who you are, for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, for all that you're going to do. We declare that your ways are good. Your plans are good. We repent, God, that when we look at this world, sometimes we feel like the plan isn't going well. And maybe we're tempted to doubt your goodness. We repent of that in Jesus' name. You are still king on your throne. You are still God Almighty, ruler of heaven and earth. So we ask that you would come in power. As you've done in the past, we praise you for our nation that you've come to our aid again and again and again throughout our history. And we ask that you do it again, Lord. We praise you. Praise you for who you are. You 
You know, there's no other name other than the name of Jesus, right? Yeah, Jesus is everything. He's everything we need. Please be seated. Um, yeah, what a beautiful, powerful God that we serve. And uh, we are so privileged uh, to be able to do this freely in this country. And so this morning, we just want to welcome you to our service here at North Springs Church. And uh, especially for our guests, uh, we're very blessed that you chose to worship with us today. And uh, we pray that you'll experience God's peace, God's glory, uh, God, everything that you need, because this is all we need. Amen. And so we ask that, um, uh, you know, you, we have some guest cards in front of the chair in front of you, so please go ahead and complete that and just place it in the offering basket as uh, they receive uh, today's offering. And uh, the, do, the reason we do that is that we would love to stay in touch with you in days, weeks, and months ahead, actually. And also, don't make it your first and last time. Uh, because every service is different, and God will minister to you. So come back once, come back twice, and yeah, just keep doing that, and then see what God does in your life. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. And then also for our guests, I just want to let you know that bathrooms, are, you go through those doors, and the men's is on the left, and the women's is on the right. And um, But today we are also honored in our midst to have our pastors, our pastors, and we're very honored and we're great friends. And that is uh, Pastor Michael. Should I call you an apostle? <laughs> Pastor Mike and Sandy Smith of Redeeming Love Church. Let's give them praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank. Let's give God praise for them. Yeah. You know, we served at, at uh, Redeeming Love. Um, uh, my husband was a senior associate pastor, and uh, they were very instrumental and very helpful in helping us plant this church. And so we we'll always honor them for that. We we'll always respect you and uh, just the way you've ministered in this uh, state of Minnesota. We're very, very blessed that you chose to come and worship with us today. Thank you, man. And then um, the other things that I wanted to bring to our attention um, is that um, obviously we know that we had VBS this week, right? And uh, yes, let's give God praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We had VBS and Pastor Nate and the team uh, were here and, um, you know, just labored. And we know that those lives, however many they were, were, were changed for eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know that it was not in vain. We thank you for all the time, Pastor Nate, and all the people that were helping here. And now we have another outreach coming up, and that's Blue Heron Days. You know, I won't say too much about it because all the information is in the bulletin. The only thing I wanted to say is that we have a sign-up uh, sheet uh, over there. So today, before you go, look at the things that you can do. It's another way we want to uh, com com mean, connect with our community. Amen? This happens every year, and it's always a blessing uh, when we reach out to people. But there are several ways we can serve, and that's in the bullet, in the, on the clipboard where you can serve as well, where you can sign up, sorry. The other last one I wanted to say is that, as you can tell here at the very bottom, Mary put a nice little graphic there. Uh, telling us what to do. Amen? The reason is we do not have a cleaner right now. We don't have someone who cleans the church. The, um, the people who are cleaning the church um, are no longer able to do it, so we all have to be responsible. Amen? Amen? You know, this is where we meet with the Lord together as a family, and we, it's, I think it's incumbent upon us to take care of it. And of uh, course, God loves excellence, and so we want to serve him in excellence in everything that we do. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah, so if you have uh, your water bottles, your Kleenexes, anything, please pick it up and throw it away, because there's nobody else to do that for us. Amen. But last but not least, uh, we do want to welcome those of you that are watching us um, online, uh, social media. We're so grateful that you choose to um, worship with us this way, and we also pray that God will bless you and your family, and that, you know, God will take care of all your needs, so just open your heart today, and God will not disappoint, 
Amen. Let's welcome them also in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Pastor Edward. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody happy? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's a time to receive the tithes and offering at this time. And uh, I keep hearing, since we were gone last week, I keep hearing everybody says, oh, you missed last Sunday. You missed last Sunday. And I'm saying, you know, I've been, I've been at the church here for a number of years. And uh, yes, we've had the spots of revival, fires of revival here and there. But this last Sunday seems to have been the biggest one. I said, why did I miss it? Am I the one who is hindering that? <laughs> you know, sometimes you feel that way as a pastor, you know, because, uh, oh, you should have been there. You know, you were gone at the time when, if you haven't watched the, uh, the, the tape, you look at it, it was very, very, we could sense it, even ourselves. We watched it after we came back from, uh, la, la, from vacation. And uh, we sense the presence of God, you know, the, what was spoken here, the theme that we've been preaching on from the book of Acts, you know, was re-emphasized over and over and over. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, and we need us, what's the purpose of us receiving the Spirit of God? So that we're going to be empowered to go out and bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. These are the last days in which we are living in, and uh, the church that Jesus Christ is coming for is going to be a powerful church. It's not a weakling church. It's a, the scripture says the church without spot or wrinkles. Amen. It's not going to be a weak church. The church that's going to be raptured to be taken up in the air by the Lord is not going to be a weak church. It's going to be a very strong church. That was a nice place for you to say amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so when I, I heard about that, and uh, I know Nate was uh, trying to preach his sermon here, and, uh, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord was just keep going. And uh, so when I watched that, and usually when you have been gone, you come back and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the reins again. I'm going to preach. And I said, uh, I know how you feel, Pastor Nate. <laughs> you prepare a sermon, and there was even a, a prop here for the demonstration. I said, why don't you take this Sunday, you know? So he's going to be speaking after, after you know, uh, everything is done here for the... So we, we want to hear, you know? I don't know. If you're a preacher, you prepare a sermon, and you have a prop that you've worked on, and then something the Lord takes over. Really, it affects you, you know? It affects you. Not in a bad way, you know, but you still feel like a, I needed to add that. I wish we had four hours of uh, services, you know, but our services are only one and a half hours, and so you kind of wrap everything up. If you were in Africa, I would have said, give us another full blown one hour, one and a half hour. Amen. So we're going to receive the tithes and offerings. We're going to ask the people to come forward to receive the tithes and offerings, and uh, amen. It's a time to give uh, the apostles as they were reiterating the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, they said, remember what the Lord said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen. That's a reality. I've been blessed in a number of ways, you know, because I love to give. I love to give. You know, it's part of our lives as Christians. We should be giving at all times. And so this church has been a giving church. We want to keep up with the, that momentum, yeah. amen, because, uh, yes, freely we have received, and freely we must give, but at the same time, this gospel is going to take an effort from our part, your participation in the ministry, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, amen? amen. And so if you've been a Christian for five years and you still struggle in matters of giving, please, would you come and talk with me? I'm going to want to talk with you. If you're a Christian for one year, you're struggling with the matters of giving, we give you three more years. You're going to be coming on board on that. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you for your people and their faithfulness to giving. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Lord, we'll be a church, a giving church and a sending church. A church, oh God, that loves your presence and the glory of the Lord. We thank you for what happened last Sunday. Lord, that's our desire. 
We know, oh God, we've been praying for revival. This whole state of, of uh, Minnesota, and uh, we've been praying for this, Lord, and we are continuing to pray, and you are no respect of persons or place. Revival can break out at any other place here in the cities. And so we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Lord, your touch, your hand, will be upon this church and upon this congregation in special and unique ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to be hearing a testimony here of a young lady. She's here already that uh, powerfully, powerfully been touched by the Lord. And uh, at the end of the worship time, she's going to come up here and, uh, you know, share. We've given her more than enough time, you know, and it's going to bless you. You had a bit of it last, time, last Sunday, but it's going, to, it's going to bless you. It blessed us that I even put it on pause and say, please don't testify last Sunday because we're not going to be here. We want you to testify when we're here. It was so selfish sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And so she's going to be sharing that testimony at the end of our worship here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I encourage you to, to stand or continue sitting or lie down or dance or move to the back or front where there's more room or grab a flag or Karen has multiple musical instruments as always with her. Worship the Lord how you feel led. Um, I felt led in preparing the service this week to again um, pick a song that relates to heaven. God has been speaking to me more and more about heaven, not because he's planning to move me there anytime soon, uh, but because it's our job as the church to proclaim the kingdom of God. Amen? When Jesus taught us how to pray, he taught us to prophetically declare your kingdom come and your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. So if we want to know what the kingdom is and how to advance it, we need to know what heaven's like a little bit. Amen? And so we've been singing a lot of songs the last few months that have something to do with heaven. And this is, a, this is an older one, but you all know it. So let's just get lost in the presence of God this morning. How's that sound? Let's let everything else go for a minute. You can even imagine yourself. The Old Testament in particular is full of imagination. God will say, picture this. He'll say, picture that. He'll say, imagine me as a roaring lion protecting you. Let's imagine ourselves in the throne room of God. Let's imagine our future where we fall down and lay our crowns before Jesus. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. Jesus. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Sing it for a little bit. Cry home. 
you to picture yourself in the throne room of God. You're wearing the crown of righteousness. Any other crowns that God has rewarded you with for faithfulness here on earth? But you don't receive those crowns to bring glory to yourself. You give that glory back to Jesus. I want you to picture yourself before the throne room of God, falling to your knees. You could even do it physically if that helps you to picture this. To fall down and give him the glory. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We fall down, we fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy. a moment just to listen to the Lord and then we're going to pray for healing again. If you need healing, would you raise your hand or notify us so that we can gather around you? John and Masumi have brought their friend Akiko. She's been with us before. She's believing for healing today. So those of you who are around, would you gather around Akiko? Are there any, any others who are looking for healing? Raise your hand. And if, you're, if a hand is up, you go find that hand and gather around those people. Okay. Until there are, uh, keep your hand up until at least two people are around you. Another holy moment. This is a holy moment. God, we believe. We believe you. We believe you to touch and heal. 
We thank you for what you did last week. Do it again now, oh God. Touch and heal. 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 In Jesus' name. Heal. In Jesus' name. We believe. We believe for healing. You said, as we were singing earlier, uh, just before this, I felt the Lord saying, I'm opening up the heavens. I'm going to allow you to see into the spiritual realm of what I am doing. Because he wants to touch us and our lives in healing, yes, healing in our bodies and our souls. And he will allow us to hear him clearer to so read his word as we walk in his ways. We thank you today, Father, that you are good, and this is your purpose for us, to see you and to know what you are doing. In Jesus' name, for your glory, we pray. Thank you for that, Karen. That's exactly what I've been praying for all week, and so that is uh, a confirmation for me, so thank you for sharing that. I've been praying for, for an open heaven that God would open up the gates of heaven over us and pour out whatever it is he wants us to have. So let's spend another moment praying. Pray for someone who needs healing. Open yourself up to receive a word from the Lord, to receive a touch from the Lord. Sometimes there's things that we're seeking. We ask and we seek and we knock and keep knocking and knocking and knocking. If you had some, something like that that you've been praying for a long time, this is the, this is the time to press into that. Amen. This is the time to press in for those yes. things that we've continued to seek for. Yes. And this is the time also to open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit who may want to give us something we didn't know we needed or we didn't know he wanted us to have. So let's spend another minute just pressing into the Lord in prayer and opening ourselves up to receive from him. The Lord said that he heals all who comes to him. And we, so often we focus on the all, but this morning I believe he wants us to focus on the come. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are in the Lord, he wants you to come, come deeper, come closer, come in the name of Jesus. I got the same word, but from Luke 11, where Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock. To seek, you got to get out of your chair and go look for something. That's what seek means means go and find it. So seek this morning. <laughs> go and find it. God's got something for you, but he needs you to, spiritually speaking, get off the chair and get it, to receive it. God doesn't force gifts on us. We have to receive them. He holds them out, and we have to take them, right? That's how gifts work. So Father, we just open ourselves in this church, in this world, in this, these cities up to your kingdom. We declare that your kingdom would come and your will be done on earth in this place, in these cities, like we haven't seen before. We receive from you, Jesus, this morning. Let's just continue to press in and, and pray. I 
surrender. I surrender. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. Lord, have your way in me. 
I feel like we are almost there. We just need to press in just a little further. God's got something he's handing out to you. Reach out and take it. Just seeing the spirit. Join together and sing. Sing all together in the spirit. Breathe on 
your kingdom move all of faith and hope and our great God let the heavens open let your kingdom move all of faith and hope and our great God let the heavens open let your kingdom move all of faith and hope Let your kingdom move all the faith and hope. I God. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move all the faith and hope. Let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move.
I believe the Lord is saying, my children, I'm here in your midst. The Lord is saying he's here. And I believe that the Lord is saying, whatever seems impossible with man is possible with me. You may have been waiting for a long time for something, for a miracle to happen. But the Lord is saying, I am in the midst of you. I am the miracle worker. I am the Lord. Again, the Lord is saying, nothing is impossible with me. Believe. 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 All things are possible. If you believe, the Lord says, don't say tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation, the Lord says. Today is the day of salvation. Reach out and believe whatever is going on in your life. The Lord is saying, I am here. I am the miracle worker. Amen. I am your provider. I am your healer. I am your sustainer. I am your restorer. Reach out and believe. Believe, the Lord says. Thank you, Lord. out to the Lord this morning. Lord, we open our hearts. We open our hands. We open our minds to you. you that we overcome by the Thank blood you, of the lamb and the word of our testimony praise your name lord that we love not our lives even mm. unto death we thank, thank you for you. this testimony this morning thank the you word father that will follow 
Help us to be fertile soil to receive the seed of your word this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We are here for you to glorify your name, to focus on Jesus. We want to make it about you, Lord. So be glorified, Lord, even as we proceed with this service, Lord, we want to wanna, wanna see Jesus. We want to see his work and power working in our lives and transforming life. We thank you. We bless you that we are recipients, Lord, recipients of all that you have for us in this day and days ahead, years ahead, until Jesus is revealed from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Well, it's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. It's wonderful to uh, experience his goodness. Amen. Amen. Just to have uh, the liberty in the spirit to worship and to praise. It delights the heart of the Lord as we come before him in worship and in praise. Like we've been waiting for, you know, the, the, uh, there, there are many of you, maybe you've been praying for something for such a long time, you haven't seen the answer come through. It is easy, the human heart at that point is uh, getting to the mode of uh, giving up. I've prayed for 15 years, I've prayed for 10 years, nothing is changing. So we give up, you know, and we lose hope in Christ Jesus. The things that we've learned about him and the, what he's able to do, they be simply become like they're they are just simply slogans. We don't see it as a reality in our own lives. Now, I'm going to ask this young lady to come here. You know, Molly, they, they've been coming here with uh, Lisa, a uh, uh, mom, uh, the last three years. They came 2019, I think. I checked up on that, 2019, and they've been here. A totally different young woman, you know. But... Uh, we never gave up hope in her. You know, we saw beyond all that. And, uh, you know, we, we could see the potential that was in her. That, you know, when you get converted, when you become, come to the Lord, you'll be a radical for the Lord. And boy, she's going to come and tell the story herself. Would you come and take the moment and just share what happened to you? Amen. What happened to you? And... Uh, Mom, mom can come and support you, you know, that, that's fine too. Yeah, and, and, and the, you know, uh, what transpired a couple of weeks ago now, what transpired to you and talking to you last, a couple of Sundays ago, you were a totally different person altogether <laughs> than that, that I'd spoken to before. You know, Jesus has done something. She had a, a Damascus experience, and this is not a, an underestimation, this is a reality. I won't take the time, would you go ahead and share? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you guys for like being here and everything. And I'm, I'm really blessed to be speaking about my testimony. Um, well, I'll give some background because a crazy experience happened a few weeks ago. And honestly, like I was the person that was sitting on my phone playing Plants vs. Zombies in church. <laughs> and I was the person that was like going out with my friends and up to a lot of really bad things. Um, like a year ago, if we were to like go back to there, and it led me down a path of a lot of really, really, really hard things and a lot of pain and a lot of things that made me feel very unworthy. And so I'm sitting here a few weeks ago, like, why me? <laughs> like, you're talking to the worst of them all. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're speaking to somebody who honestly was very, like, against and almost like angry with the Lord for a very long time, and I had really stepped away. And um, this kind of brings me to talk about my mom, and she's probably going to start crying over there. <laughs> and she was faithful and prayed for me every single day. And so don't give up on your children, because the Lord's not giving up on your children. And that's crazy that we were talking about this earlier today, and, you, and it's about, like, faithful prayers, like praying every day and not giving up on it, because it's so worth it. I was, like, I'm excited to come to church every Sunday now. Like, keep praying for your children, because they will come back to the Lord. Like, I promise, like, they will, and it will be so beautiful when they do. Um, so let me go into the, like, testimony and kind of what happened. So I was driving my car. <laughs> And I was, if you were here last week, you know what my mom was kind of saying. You know what I mean? She was kind of um, talking about it a little bit. <laughs> but um, anyways, I was driving in my car, 
And I was just like, for some weird reason, I had this calling to be like listening to Christian music in my car. And I was like, okay, I haven't had this calling in a really long time. What's going on? Like, why, why am I feeling like so, you know, even like crying, just sobbing in my car, like praising the Lord and saying like, you're an abundant God. Like you are a faithful, like you're, you're like here with me, like all these different things. And then I heard the Lord say to me, um, turn around, don't work today go home and read my word today. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, and I, at first I was like, okay, this could have been not a thing. Like, I don't know. And then I, but then it just was, came to this point where the more I was driving like farther away from my house, I just felt like this, ugh, like this icky like feeling the more I was far, like not driving home. So I, I drove home and I called my friend Nate, who is also um, somebody who the Lord has brought into my life um, on my walk and was like, read James. <laughs> Have y'all ever read James? Because <laughs> that is one of the best books in the Bible. I love that book. It is wonderful. And I read James, and it was it was amazing. I had it was one of the most um, profound experiences I've ever had. And um, yeah, so that was something that had happened. And honestly, after that had happened, you know, I realized like as soon as you walk close with the Lord, there's always the enemy always comes in. And it's always trying to steal that away and always trying to like put you in a place where it's almost impossible to keep following the Lord. Um, and I remember I was like talking to one of my friends who isn't um, Christian or anything. And she was like asking me all these questions like, who even is this guy? Like what, like, what are you even talking about? And all I was hearing was the Lord say to me, like, I am. And I was like, what? I was like, the Lord just answered every question that anyone who was questioning him like, I don't know, there's a, there a lot of different things that had happened, and um, yeah, so I'm really, I'm really blessed and excited to be coming to church every Sunday, and to be, like, having all these people come onto my path that are wonderful, and yeah, I don't know, I'm really grateful for it. So keep praying for your children, please. That is, like, the main thing, is, like, keep praying for your children, because they will come back to the Lord, and and it will be crazy. It will be like one of those things that they come back and it's like, wow, you know, the Lord is still holding on to them and, and not giving up on them. So don't give up on your kids. Keep praying for them because if my mom didn't, I would have been, yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys. We're gonna pray for you. Oh, uh, yeah. So anyone who wants to come okay. pray. <laughs> well, actually, one of, the, one of the things Molly told us, um, uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, when she was telling us about her conversion, uh, she had texted um, and said she wanted to talk to my husband to explain mm -hmm. that what has happened to her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Molly, I mean, we see the glory of God all over you. I mean, you just, you're beautiful naturally, but I guess <laughs> the beauty of Jesus is being seen right now. But uh, I think that one, one thing that happened when you explained the testimony to us is that you saw a, a brilliant light you saw the light of oh, the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. Okay, that did happen. I, for, I forgot that big like point. Um, so there was like a bunch of light like coming over me, like, and I was worried because I was driving. So I was like, "All right, uh, I'm gonna get into an accident. Like, all right, what's going on?" Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's just a bunch of light, and then I ended up being fine and just turning around. Okay. Amen. Yeah, that reminds of, of course, about uh, Paul on the Damascus Road, right? And so we are so grateful for what the Lord has done in you because we, we can see from the time you came uh, to today, you are totally glowing Amen. with the glory of God. Praise so it is worth it. Amen. Let's give God a you know, praise. It's wonderful. And her mama that day had been crying out to the Lord. And I'm going to say this part because it's important had been crying out to God about her family. And uh, she was watching someone speaking, a Christian speaker before church. And the person said, um, you know, don't worry. It's, it's going to be sooner than you think. Your family is going to turn around. That day, the Lord did it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's dear a real wonderful father, and we're so grateful for you and what God is going to do in your life. We, you, we know you'll touch a lot of lives, but okay, I'll give it to Paul to pray. We're just going to pray for you. So, Father, we're so thankful for your faithfulness. We're so thankful that you're our father, and you're our king, and you're our bridegroom. So we just ask you, even now, 
in Molly's life, that you would pour out the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, God. We ask you that you would just continue to mark her, that you would pour out your love into her heart through the Holy Spirit, God. We ask you that you would bring opportunities in her life to share this testimony and that it overcomes the enemy, Father. Nothing can challenge what she experienced in this profound experience with you, God. So we ask you even now, God, for more. We ask you for the spirit of hunger and thirst for righteousness, God. We, and we thank you that nothing, none of these prayers were wasted, God. None of these experiences in everything that the enemy meant for evil, you turned it around for good. So we ask you, Father, that you would be the zealous desire of her heart, that you would be her exceedingly, abundantly great reward, Father. We're just so grateful that we got to be a church who was a part of her journey. But we ask you, Father, that our ceiling would be her floor. Father, pour it out that she would be a sign to her generation, God, that you are faithful, that you are unfailing, that you are a wonderful counselor, that you are a mighty God. You are an everlasting father, a prince of peace, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. Do it more, God. We ask you for more. Encounter her school. Encounter her friends encounter everyone that she's that has been in her circle of in her circle of community god that they would know that she's truly changed that this isn't a fad this isn't some opioid god but you are the king of her life and we're so thankful in jesus name we pray amen You take what you can get, right? I'll take, I'll take one. First Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read uh, the first 10 verses, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. First Peter 2, verse 1. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, like yourselves, you are being, uh, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. For it stands in scripture, and he's quoting Isaiah here, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who don't believe, and he quotes Psalms, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And then he goes back to Isaiah, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobeyed the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. Beautiful passage, right? Really, really beautiful. Um, there is so much in here. I could do several weeks on this passage. I think he quotes or alludes to over 20 scriptures of, in the Old Testament um, in this passage. It's really amazing. So let's look at the beginning. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 1, he starts with, so put away. Put away. This is actually really significant. Put away. Peter is bringing to our minds a story in which he was the main character that involved the words put away. Anybody think of it? Think Gospels. Yes, who, who said that? Kent, gold star. Do you remember uh, when Jesus was being arrested, 
Peter experiences his most embarrassing moment in a list of long, a long list of embarrassing moments, right? Love Peter. And Peter is upset at the injustice of Jesus being arrested, and he gives in to his flesh, and he pulls out his sword and he hacks a guy's ear off, one of the guards who had come to arrest Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Jesus rushes over and heals the ear of the soldier who had his ear cut off. That's how we treat our enemies, in case you're wondering. We don't fight them. We don't cut off their ears. We don't attack them. We love them. We show them the love of God, the mercy of God. Amen? We talked about that a little bit last week. So Jesus heals him, and he turns back to Peter and issues a command, and he says, put away your sword. Put away your sword. And so now Peter, this is very humble of Peter, i got to say. He's reminding us, remember that story <laughs> where I did something so stupid, and Jesus told me to put away my weapon? Well, I'm telling you now, put away your weapons. These are all not physical weapons. They are emotional or intellectual weapons against other people, right? Put away all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and slander. These are like weapons. They're like intellectual weapons, emotional weapons. And Peter, remembering back to the story where Jesus told him to put it away, he's telling us, put that away. Stop that. Stop it. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. And then he goes on in the next verse. I love this one. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up into salvation. This is one of those motherly metaphors for God in the Bible. There's a lot of these. I've had people ask me, and Tim is going to do something now. Yes, reposition it. So I sometimes have people ask me, you know, I relate more to my mom than my dad for whatever reasons. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Moving on. This is a great motherly metaphor of Jesus in Scripture. People ask me sometimes, you know, I, I relate more to my mom than my dad. And I'm always like, there's a lot of motherly metaphors in Scripture, like tons. And this is one of the great ones. So it's like God is nursing us. He's giving us the pure spiritual milk that we need um, in order to grow up spiritually. Does that sound good? And then he says, you can turn it down. Um, sorry, I have a heat problem, for those of you who don't know. So I, I'm really hot, and my wife is helping me with my fan. Thank you, babe. God can use anybody, even handicapped people. Amen? Even people with illness, even people with problems. Thank Jesus. If God only used the perfect and the powerful, we'd all be in trouble, wouldn't we? So then he says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. So Peter's primarily talking to the church in this passage. But he's aware that some of the people reading this, some of the people in the church that he's writing to, aren't going to be saved yet. Right? And so he's saying, if you have indeed tasted that the Lord is good. And I like that he says that because that's one of my favorite verses in Psalms. Psalms 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's my evangelism verse. And I've said it many times to people who are like, I just don't know what I think about all this. I'm like, how about you give it a shot? I dare you. I dare you to give God a shot. Give it a few months. Go to church, talk to some Christians, let them pray for you, read your Bible, maybe go to a small group. Give it a few months. If it doesn't stick, fine. What have you lost? Nothing. Give it a few months. And I put God on the spot, and he has yet to fail when put on the spot. I think that's what we're supposed to do. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let people experience God if they've never experienced him before. Bring them to church. Challenge them once in a while to taste and see that God is good. And then verse 4, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So I, I want to pause here. So it calls Jesus a living stone, and then he goes on to quote uh, from the Old Testament that he's not any stone, he's a cornerstone. What's the cornerstone? Well, it's usually the biggest, heaviest stone in the corner of a building, 
hence the name Cornerstone. And it bared most of the building's stress. Stress is an engineering term. Stress means a load or a force or a system of forces that produces strain or causes deformation. That's what stress is. And the cornerstone, its purpose is to bear most of the building's stress. If you're letting yourself get stressed out, that's not God's will for you. He wants to bear most of that stress. And that's a whole other sermon that we'll do another time. Okay. But he says that not only is Jesus a living stone and the cornerstone of what God's building, but he says we are being built up into a spiritual house. We, as living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house. Jesus said this to Peter. Again, he's calling back to the Gospels. Do you remember this? When Peter declares, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Peter, because you didn't come to this on your own. God revealed this to you. And upon this rock... I will build my house. Now, we know the verse as upon this rock, I will build my church, right? But the Bible, it doesn't say church. It doesn't say ecclesia. It says, I'll build my house. Oiko domu. Oiko to build, domu to house. It, it's like where we get the word domicile. Domicile, house. Upon this rock, this stone, I will build my house. And most translators put it as church because they decide this is a big epic verse and it should have a more epic word like church. But what he says is house, which is exactly what Peter says here in, in 1 Peter chapter 2. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. Now, this is going to be a whole other sermon. I need to do more research on why it says house. Why not you're be, be, being built up into a spiritual cathedral or a palace or a, a castle, something more epic? It says you're being built up into a spiritual house. It seems kind of anticlimactic, right? What's the purpose of Jesus on earth? To build the kingdom and to build a spiritual house? That's not that impressive. We all have houses, right? But he chose that word intentionally. It means something. And on the surface, it's pretty obvious that at least one of the things that it means is that the house is where the family is, right? We're, that's where we live. That's where we hang out. And God is not interested so much in building a spiritual cathedral or a spiritual castle to be super impressive to everybody. He wants to build a house, a place for his brothers or, and his sons and daughters. We're God's son, but we're also God's brother because Jesus is our brother. But it's all familial. We're family, right? He's being, we're being built into a spiritual house a place for us to live. And Peter is referring back to when Jesus said that to him. So let me ask you this. Why does it say we are living stones? Living stones. Because that's not the word I would think of for this metaphor. Because we don't build stuff out of stones much, do we? And in his day, he was occupied by Rome. The vast majority of building that was happening in the country was not stonework. People didn't build stuff out of stones. Some of the Hebrews did. If they were poor and that's all they had, they would build out of stones. But usually, people built with something else. Any ideas? Bricks. Steve. Lots of gold stars this morning. To make sense to most people reading this, it really should say you're building, being built up, you are spiritual bricks being built a new house. It's much easier, cheaper, and faster to build with bricks than it is to build with stones. I know you've been wondering what's under here. All right, so this is a brick. This particular brick tapers a little bit on the edges because it was used, go ahead and put that up on the big screen, to build a fire pit. I am pristinely ungifted at building things. Like, really, that's not my thing, right? But we built that two years ago. Yes! <laughs> we bought a kit, and we put it together ourselves, and I was amazed. It only took like an hour. We built that fire pit. If you were at a house for Bella's baptism a couple weeks ago, maybe you saw this in our backyard. And you can see they taper on one end, and the small end goes in towards the circle. And you just set them in a circle. There's three rings. They're not even uh, cemented together. Like we didn't use mortar or anything. We just set down the bricks. It's really easy to build stuff with bricks. Even a moron can do it. And I proved that two years ago when I built that fire pit. 
Anybody can build using bricks. It's easy. It's the same stuff. They're identical. Same internal components, same size, same weight, same density, same shape. It's easy to build with bricks. Very, very easy. The Romans built with bricks because it was so easy. If one of them breaks, you pull it out, put an identical one in, easy piece. I'm going to set this down because it's super heavy. It does not say you are spiritual bricks being built up into a spiritual house. You're living bricks. No. You would, I would expect it to say bricks. You're living bricks, but it doesn't. It says you're living stones. Why? Anybody have an idea? Okay. That is very true. And the reason for that is the same reason for this, I think. Steve. We're all different sizes. There's differences. Ding, ding, ding. That's two. You guys both got two out of two. We have some scholars in the room. And it's not man-made. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that, Tim. Jerry, you're right. This is man-made. And it's possible to build a spiritual house that's really more about us than it is about God. I'm not going to comment on that further. But you've probably all experienced that at some point, right? This is made by man. That doesn't mean it's bad. But these were made by God. Got some stones here. You are not a brick. Sometimes you might feel like a brick, but you're not a brick. Everybody in here is different. These are all the same, all the same, identical. They have the same backstory, the same history, the same components, the same consistency, the same size, shape, weight. Everything's the same. Super boring, but super easy to work with, right? But God didn't build bricks. He didn't create bricks. He didn't create robots. He created humans, and humans are messy, right? You ever been around any of us? Man, it's tough sometimes. Sometimes we're the worst, right? And we're just difficult. We're all different. And it complicates the church. My goodness. Does it com Can my pastor friends give me an amen? It's much more complicated to deal with living stones than it is living bricks. But this is what Jesus wanted to do. Let me show you some of these stones. This is, these are all from the North Shore, Lake Superior, except for one of them. Um, this is a... Lava rock, super heavy, super dense, dark, dark stone. It's got some sharp bits on here, OK? This is one of you, or two of you in here. Maybe you're like, yeah, I've been told I'm a bit dense. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit sharp on occasion. But that's, that's one of us. Here's another rock. This one's cool. It's really flat. I don't know. I'm not a geologist. I'm not going to get all the names right of all these different types of rock. But there's a type of stone down here, and then there's a different type up here, right? It's kind of quartzy, and it's really cool. It's flat. If the light was right, you could see it sparkles all nice. Very different than this, right? And then we got this guy. It's pink. I don't know anywhere <laughs> where you could find pink rocks other than Lake Superior. It's really cool. Again, sparkly. It looks amazing underwater. This one's interesting. It's a rock with a whole bunch of holes in it. It looks like a meteorite. I pretend it's a meteorite. It's not. It's not heavy enough. Um, so what, what's going on here is there were smaller deposits of some other mineral, something else, all over this stone originally, making all these spaces. But over time, Lake Superior bashed this thing so much over and over again against the rocks that it banged out all that other stuff. And maybe somebody here feels like this is your story. You've been banged around quite a bit. You're maybe missing some stuff that used to be there. But God can use you to be built up as a spiritual house as well. Amen. I think this is beautiful. I think this is beautiful. I'd love to see the story. I'd love to watch the video of this rock's history. It'd be very interesting. This one is a little different. This is an agate. I actually got it in Mexico, not up north. Um, this has been carved into the shape of a heart and polished really, really well, so it's nice and smooth. This heart has a little crack in it. I wonder what that was about. 
that little story. It's part of the agate. Sometimes, when we've been in the Lord long enough, we end up a little more polished. Right? Anybody ever feel like we could use a little polishing? Maybe, after you said that thing to your spouse, and afterwards you're like, mm, that, was a little, that was a little sharp. I could use a little polishing, Lord. Well, the Holy Spirit loves to do that. So he takes us as we are, but he changes us over time to make us more like his son, right? We are living stones. We're all different. Each and every one of us here is a living stone being built up into the spiritual house. So this little house has nice walls filled with stones, and you're all in that wall. How cool is that? You're all different. And without you, the wall wouldn't work right. Because we need a stone just so like you in order to fit into that spot. God knows what he's doing. Anybody know that? God knows what he's doing. He doesn't call people to churches willy-nilly. He has a plan and a purpose for you, for this church, for the Twin Cities, for Minnesota, for the United States, the world. And you are an integral part of that plan. Nobody can say, I'm actually not that important. I'm, just, I'm, I'm one of the <laughs> heavy, dense ones with sharp edges. I'm not that big of a deal. Well, guess what? Even some of these stones have hidden gems in them. That's a nice vein of rose quartz in the middle of that stone. There used to be about three times as much of it. Um, a very curious child at our house chipped away most of the rose quartz because it was pretty. And you can't blame them for that, right? Uh, but I love this rock because it looks so pedestrian on the outside, but it has this beautiful vein. Some of you are like this, and you have maybe thought of yourself sort of negatively, maybe most of your life. I, I don't necessarily have that much to offer. I don't have that much to give. I'm not special. But it turns out you are. And through the Holy Spirit and your brothers and sisters here in this wall, we can help you find that hidden gem. Find that precious thing. Rose quartz is really pretty. Feel free to come up and look at this afterwards. It's nice pink. God created all of us as living stones. We are all unique. We are all different. And we are all important. The wall of this house would not be the same without you in it. So I encourage you, don't leave a hole in the wall. Don't be a hole in the wall. But don't, don't, don't leave one in the wall either. We need you. We need you. Um, Graham Cook is one of my favorite Bible teachers, and he likes to say something that I think is probably right. He's probably right in a few things, actually. But um, this particular one, he says, God is willing to heal you about 80%, and then he gives you friends. So in other words, your, your emotional journey, your mental journey, maybe even physical, God's willing to supernaturally heal you about 80%, but that last 20 is up to the church. And that fits with what I read in scripture. We need one another. It's kind of super American to be like, oh, I don't need anybody else. It's just me and God. Me plus God is a majority. You know, we hear all that kind of stuff. That's not what this talks about like ever. We need one another. We're not being built up as a spiritual rock in the middle of nowhere. We're being built up as a spiritual house. And when you build something out of the rocks, they stay there, right? Now. You know, that's where it's a metaphor. God moves people from one church to another and that sort of thing, of course. But we are supposed to be together. We're supposed to reinforce one another. We're supposed to bear some of the stress of each other. Do you see that in the word? Bearing one another's burdens? Yeah. Somebody said that too, right? That's what God has intended. And if you're not a part of that, a part of what's going on, then there's somebody here who is missing out. It's not just that you should be a part of the church and asking the Lord, Lord, show me how I can bless my fellow stones in this wall so that I can receive more. That's not wrong. It's not wrong to want to receive more from God. That's a good thing, actually. We should pursue that. But it's not just about you. There's somebody else here who desperately needs something that God is going to give you. And God will bless them through you. And if we're not obedient... And even more than obedient, seeking that out, we're going to miss out, right? I encourage you this week, this is your homework, spend some time this week praying, God, how can I bless 
other people at North Springs? Give me some ideas, God. Give me some ideas. I know many of you do this every week. You pray how you can bless your brothers and sisters here at church, your neighbors, people you work with. But I encourage you, for those of you who don't, try that this week. And if you do, just double down and do it even more. God, how can I bless the other stones you've put around me? How can I bless them? How can I show them your love? How can I encourage them? How can I build them up so that this wall, this house becomes even stronger and even more of a blessing? If we, if, if the church in, let's just say the Twin Cities, if the church in the Twin Cities spent time every week praying about how we could bless each other and others and actually listening to God and then obeying what he says, the world would be changed in like a day and a half. And I, I, you know I believe in revival. You know I'm praying for revival. I believe the next Great Awakening is literally, we're probably already started it, okay? But don't wait for that to happen. Reach out now. Be the revival for your neighbor today. Be the revival for that lost soul in your house today, that prodigal. Pray for them. Reach out to them. Don't argue with them. Again, Jesus says, uh, Peter says here that Jesus is a stone of offense, right? Non-Christians will be offended by God. It just happens. It's, it, it's expected. Expect non-Christians to be offended by God. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bug you when the world says, ah, oh, Christians are so terrible and evil. Don't let that bug you. Didn't bug Peter. He wrote this from prison, so he knew what he was talking about, right? He knew full well. And he said, look, Jesus is going to offend non-Christians. That's how it works. Jesus is really offensive if you're deceived. It's only through the eyes of faith that you see the beauty of Jesus and what he did for us. Amen? So don't expect the world to not act like the world. They're going to. Our response is to love them, not to attack them. Put away all the malice and deceit and the slander. Let's stop doing that. Okay? Let's put away those weapons and let's focus on the spiritual and praying down the strongholds in their mind and in their heart, praying against the deception that's blinding them from seeing Jesus for who he really is. Let's reach out to them. Instead of arguing on Facebook with the person who posts something that is like, oh, that's so wrong, why not invite them over for dinner? Why not ask them if there's something you can pray for and do it? Let's, let's try to be more like Jesus. The temptation to pull out the sword is real, right? And, I, and I'm going to tell you, even this week, there have been times where I have allowed myself to start imaginary conversations with people that turn into imaginary arguments, where I, as the hero, have convinced them the error of their ways, and they have fallen at the feet of Jesus, I mean me, and then come to the Lord, and it was a wonderful fantasy. That's, that's not the prescription, right? God's like, so how'd that work for you? How many people got saved from that flight of fancy? Uh, none, obviously, is the answer. Let's, let's put that away. Let's put that away. And let's focus on loving people the way Jesus did and healing our enemies instead of fighting them. Amen? Does that sound like something we can do? Let's close in prayer. Father God, we thank you that we're not bricks. We thank you that we are not all the same. We thank you that we weren't made by the hands of men, but that we were created and knit together by you, Jesus, through whom all things were made and without whom nothing was made that's been made. I pray that you would help us to see who we are as a thing of beauty and not something to be ashamed of or afraid of or embarrassed about. I pray for those who feel like we're the most boring stone in the wall or that we're not going to be the most helpful to people. We don't have gifts. We can't speak. We can't sing. Lord Jesus, you've created each of us unique and with a purpose. And I pray that for those who don't realize what that purpose is, I pray for a spirit of revelation in Jesus' name. 
I pray for that spirit of revelation even this week, Lord God. Reveal to us, shove it down deep in our soul that we know we're your child, that you love us, that you created us for a purpose. And show us, we ask, some of what that purpose is. I think there are some of you who are going to have to seek that out. Remember in Luke 11, Jesus says, ask, seek, knock, and keep on knocking. To seek means to go find it. For some of us, God might directly reveal, this is what I want you to do right now. This is what I want you to do in the season ahead. For others, you might not hear anything, and you're going to need to keep asking and keep asking and keep asking and seek it out. And the more mature we are in Christ, the more he asks of us, and the more he asks us to seek. Can I get an amen? Anybody experience that one? Amen. The more mature we are in Christ, the more he expects us to seek and keep on seeking, keep on seeking until we find what it is we're trying to find. So Jesus, I pray that you would bless us with perseverance and faith to seek and keep seeking until we reach the prize that you have for us, a prize not for our own playtime, but a prize to bless other people to bless this body, to bless this spiritual house that you have called us to be. Lord, help us to walk into the destiny that you have for each of us as your precious sons and daughters. And help us to remember, as Peter says at the end, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Help us to remember that these people that are so offended by you, these people that are, it's easy to see them as enemies, that we were just like them. We were just like them before we received your mercy. Help us to have more compassion and more love for those who are enemies of you. And help us to become more grateful for that mercy that you showed to us so that we can show that mercy to others. We ask you to speak to us throughout this week, Lord. I really believe we're in a season where God is speaking a lot. He's saying a lot of things. He's revealing a lot of things to people. Press into that. I encourage you. Spend some time each day just listening. Just listening to the Lord. Help us do that, Jesus. It's hard for us to sometimes carve out things of our schedule. We're creatures of habit. But I pray that you would help us to do that and spend more time listening. And I thank you that you're going to honor that by speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, the front of the bulletin today, this is Split Rock right, Lighthouse up north where a lot of these rocks came from. So it all comes together. And I want to say um, something to the people at home. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. You are a part of this as well. Even if your part of the wall is more remote <laughs> or in a different spot, you are still a part of the spiritual house of God. Amen? And so I encourage you, if you're, if you're able to, find some Christians that you can meet with in person. Because um, the Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. It's really important to try to do that. And we thank you for joining us, Mr. Harris. Oh, yeah, come up and share. And if you haven't, you know, if you haven't received Jesus yet, email one of us. Chat with Yamaris if you're on Facebook. And she can introduce you to Jesus. If you're here this morning and you don't know who he is yet, if you have not yet tasted and seen that the Lord is good, please come talk to me. I'd love to introduce you. I dare you to taste and see. Amen? Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Steve who's got a quick announcement.